Hi, in this video, I'll show you the exact techniques you need to use today to start sketching portraits like a pro. All right, so what I want to show you in this video is how you can sketch uh, portraits like this one uh, with ease by using a few methods and techniques from professional artists and master painters. Uh, so this is a sketch that I did. And basically what I've been uh, doing when I was sketching this is having a thought process that came from basically uh, three different artists and just measurements by observation. And I have them right here. It is the uh, Loomis method, the Riley method, the SRO head, and just observation and measurements. Uh, to give you just a quick uh, understanding of each of them, the Loomis method was made by Andrew Loomis, which is uh, an artist from the 1950s, I believe, or maybe a little bit earlier. Uh, and he was basically building his heads when it comes to portrait from a perfect sphere with precise measurements. And it was very like constructing something out of geometric shapes. Very great techniques that will really help you uh, to build a head one step at a time. Then you have the Riley method, which is from uh, Frank J. Riley. A big difference between those two, although they are a little bit similar, is this one was very much constructed. This one is all about flow and rhythm lines. Frank Riley uh, thought that basically you could simplify the human figure by having certain lines that go from places to places. Like here we have the jaw line that goes towards the tip of the mouth. Um, and you have all sorts of lines like this, basically. To uh, to study this one, the big difference also between those two is you'll have books about the Loomis methods, but you won't have books about the Riley method. You can only learn from people that either uh, were thought by him or uh, people that were taught by him that teach others. But there's no books uh, to actually see his technique. The Azaro head uh, from John Asaro was a tool being created to show the planes of the head. And this one is very important uh, when it comes to rendering. And it's a little bit built upon, I would say, the Loomis method and the Riley method, the way uh, the head is built with all the different lines and construction from geometric shapes and rhythm lines. But what it shows mostly is the planes of the face uh, or the planes of the head which really helps you when it comes to rendering, once you understand a little bit more in the light theory, then having uh, an Azaro head will really help you to know where are supposed to be your light values, your shadows, your cast shadow, and all this. And the fourth thing that I, I usually use to do my portraits or my sketches uh, is observation measurements. This is a video, this is a, a little sketch from a video that I created. I'll put a link in the description of this video so you can go check it out. But basically there is five things that you can uh, measure from observation, which are how to simplify shape, finding the angles, comparing uh, the placement, comparing the positive and negative shapes and the proportions. Uh, go have a look at the videos. If you don't know those things, these will really help you to be able to just uh, construct portraits with more ease. And so in this video, what I'll do is I'm going to show you how I create a portrait a sketch from scratch. And I'm going to walk you through my walk process and my thought process on how I use all those different uh, those different tools. All right, so the first thing I'm doing usually is to uh, get inspired by the uh, Loomis method. I usually start with geometric shapes, basically. I would start with a, a sphere or, you know, something as close as possible as a perfect sphere and place uh, my, my, my placement of the side of the head, the uh, bra line, the nose line, the ear line, all of those lines that can be very well measured with the Louis method. Having this method will just give you a basic roadmap where you'll be able to place your features afterwards. From there, I'm able to start building a little bit more with uh, just basic observation. I compare different placement like the eyebrow versus uh, the line of the hair. Where, what's the distance between the two of them? The angle of the hair to make sure that I match every angle. The angle of the jaw, the angle of the neck. All those angles can be compared uh, in proportion, uh, basically one step at a time. And if you want to know exactly how I do this, like I was saying, I made a video about this, so you can go check it out right now. And the video is with a banana, but uh, don't be fooled by the banana. The technique in there will really help you with basically anything. 
Once I have the base, I use both the Riley method and the Asaro head to have a few placement of the jaw and the different planes of the head. These will help me later on to uh, build the portrait and even more to render it. Uh, but for now, I place them just as placement, a placeholder for me to have a general understanding of my proportions. All of this up to this point, I called this the, uh, the geometric sketch. Uh, and what I'm about to start is what I call the loose sketch. And that's pretty much the last sketch that I'll do here. Uh, basically, a loose sketch is to go a little bit more precisely. And what I do is almost tracing over the, uh, the previous step, which was to build and construct. At this point, I'm using a lot more the measurement technique. I'm trying to measure everything. I'm looking at the space between the eyebrow and the eye, for example. I'm looking at um, the space of the sclera, which is the white of the eye. All those different things that can be compared. Uh, and I cannot stress enough, I made a video about this, so go check it out. I'm telling you, there's too many people that think that only the Riley method or the Loomis method will help them making awesome portraits. But the reality is, it's a lot about measurement. It's a lot about observation. Most of the mistakes that I see in the portrait of my students are based on the fact that they are missing clues when they are observing their reference picture. So go check it out if you didn't or, you know, finish this video and go check it out afterwards. All right, so like I was saying, this is what I call the loose sketch. Usually I would do another pass over, over this one. So we have the geometric sketch, the loose sketch, and I would do another pass over that to what I call the final line or final sketch. Uh, but I don't think it's gonna be necessary for this. What I wanna do now though is to give you just uh, a little bit more understanding of, I keep talking about the measurements. It's what do I do when I say measurements? What I do is I take the time to really just uh, observe and compare things. And I'm gonna give you examples here. For example, I'm looking at this angle and this angle. They are pretty much almost parallel. If I go here, they are not. So if I wanted to, and I don't have to because I'm not trying to make exactly the same um, the same portrait necessarily, what I could do is just go back here and start just modifying this, making sure that, all right, they are, they are parallel. I'm looking at the length, the length of this versus the length of this. This is a little bit longer than this length. So I could come back here once again and just kind of try to, keeping the same values here, just trying to kind of measure and compare everything. And by doing this exercise, by taking your time of comparing everything one thing at a time, you'll get closer to this. In this case, I'm having something that's a little bit more cute, but it doesn't mean that I'm not able to do this exercise, comparing every portion and modifying just a little bit the different part of the portrait will make the portrait just that much better. And that's it for this video. I hope you liked it. Let me know in the comment below which of those techniques you like the most. The Andrew Lumis technique, the Riley, or the Azaro head. Maybe you're using also the measurements. Please let me know in the comment and also let me know if you would like for me to create a video specifically on each of those techniques. Also, if you want to participate to the Paintable Challenge all year long, you can join the Discord server. I'll put a link in the description of this video so you don't miss it. And for the rest, I hope you like this video. I'm looking forward to see you in the next. Make sure to subscribe to not miss any of them uh, and I'll see you in the next one guys. Happy painting!